Ah, this afternoon we are going to look at some bonus content. We are going to study some other algorithms for multiplying large numbers. And we'll be answering the question, are there other algorithms I can use to multiply large numbers? Well, of course there are. There's lots of ways of doing everything. We're going to look particularly at two of them that I see most in classrooms. One of these has been called magic squares. It's basically a chart for doing multiplication using the distributive property. So if I were to get a problem that looked like this, I would build a chart that looks like this. Because it's a two-digit times two-digit problem, I would need four squares. What's 36, three tens, and six ones? What's 42, four tens, and two ones? So to do this problem traditionally, using the standard algorithm, I would do two times six, which of course is 12, three times two is six plus one is seven, six times four is 24, three times four is 12, 12 plus two is 14, add them up, you get two, 11, five and one, and you get a final answer of 1,512. Well, if I wanted to do this on the boxes, my procedure would be this. First, I would multiply the side times the top. 40 times 30. Three times four is 12, and there are two zeros, so it's gonna need a 12. So four times three is 12, and two zeros. Next, these two cross, so 40 times 6. 6 times 4 is 24. We're multiplying 1, 0. 30 times 2. 3 times 2 is 6. We're multiplying 10s. And then 2 times 6 is 12. And if you look, you're going to notice something. Look here. 72, guess what this is? 72. 1,440, guess what that is? 1,440. So to finish the problem, what I would need to do is to add up what's in the boxes. And you can see I've pulled them over and written them here. Two and nothing is two. Six plus four plus one is 11. Two plus two plus one makes five. And one and nothing is five. So I get the same answer because I'm doing the same thing, just in a slightly different manner. So here's a couple more to try real quick. If I wanted to do 25 times 36, I would set up the box. It's a two by two, so I need four. 25, 36. 20 times 30, well, 2 times 3 is 6. Multiplying two zeros, so 20 times 30 is 600. 30 times 5, 3 times 5 is 15, but I'm multiplying by 10, so I need a 0. 20 times 6 is 120, and 6 times 5 is 30. So now that I've done the multiplying, my job is to list what's inside the boxes and add that up. So now I've pulled my numbers over and done that, and you can see that I get a final answer of 900. Let's check it. Yep, there we go. It's correct. So let's look at a second one, 73 times 20. And the reason I picked that problem is because I wanted to show you about having a zero here, because 20 is two tens and no units. It's still a two-digit number. This still needs to be four boxes. So we'll take that and do 20 times 70, which is 2 times 7, 14, and two zeros. 20 times 3 is 60. 70 times 0 is 0, and 3 times 0 is 0. And that one's actually easy to add in your head. 1,400 plus 60 gives you 1,460. So now here's one for you to try. Go to your notebook. Build the squares. You can always rewind the video and take a look at what uh, needs to be done. And then run the problem. Tomorrow we will check it. So here's a second. This algorithm is called lattice multiplication. It's a set of boxes that have to be made that match the digits of the problem. For example, if I wanted to multiply 356, a three-digit number, times three, a single-digit number, I would need to have a lattice that is three squares wide and one square deep. If I wanted to do 42, a two-digit number, times 67, another two-digit number, I would need 
a two by two set of boxes or a total of four. Doing the arithmetic isn't complicated, but it looks a little odd. What we're going to do is multiply these numbers times that number one at a time. If I get an answer with a 10, it will go here. Answers that have units go there. For example, 6 times 3 is 18. 18 has 1 10 and 8 units. 5 times 3 is 15. 15 has 1 10 and 5 units. 3 times 3 is 9. 9 has 0 10s and 9 units. So that's the first part of what needs to be done. Then the second part is to add what falls within these lines. 8's all by itself. 5 plus 1 is 6. 9 plus 1 is 10, and I will have to carry. 10 has no units and 1 10. 1 and nothing is 1. So our answer here is 1,068. Let's bring it down to the second, 42 times 67. And just like we did with the magic squares, we're going to go where they meet. 2 times 6 is 12. 12 has 1 10 and 2 units. 2 times 7 is 14. 14 has 1 10 and 4 units. What's nice is it doesn't matter what order I do this in. 6 times 4 is 24, which has 2 10s and 4 units. And 7 times 4 is 28, with 2 10s and 8 units. Add up what's within the boxes. 4 is all by itself. 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 plus 2 is 11. But again, I have to remember to carry. So that goes there, and that goes there. 2 plus 4 is 6. Plus 2 is 8. And 2 and nothing is 2. So I end up with 2,814 for a final answer. If you will please stop the video and add one of these samples to your notebook, you'll have it. So we have answered the question, are there other algorithms I can use to multiply large numbers? And I've shown you that there are two that you can use pretty readily. Have a good afternoon.